Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Chrome Deployment Methodology and Adoption Session. My name is Amber Weinberger, and I'm a Customer Success Manager for the Chrome Enterprise team on the East Coast. For the agenda today, we're going to talk through the overview of Chrome Deployment Methodology, kick off best practices and watch points, uh, defining deployment audience or groups, and evaluating success. As we look through the Chrome deployment methodology, um, there's a few different areas that we want to focus on as we go through the entire deployment project plan. Um, for those of you who are new to Chrome, um, this may look um, a bit unfamiliar to you. If you had just started your deployment, you probably had just gone through the sales stage where you qualified, did discovery, did solution validation, um, as well as the deployment planning with your account team. This is where we can have a good sense of what hardware and software you're going to use, what deployment strategy workshop uh, you want to have for your team, as well as the SOW finalization, and then going through the initial proposal close. The deployment stage really starts once the kickoff starts. So as you determine what your deployment team will look like, it's where we'll be able to identify what team members will be focused on what and get a good sense of what your project plan will look like. The project kickoff will start initially with your account team, and that's where you'll be able to determine your deployment blueprint, develop your project plan, and figure out what milestones you want to have accomplished with your organization. A deployment can really last anywhere from three to six months, but depending on the organization, it can definitely be shorter or longer than that, depending on how large of a deployment it is and how many use cases and barriers you might be running into throughout the deployment. Throughout the deployment, you'll be able to work with your account team to really focus on the man management console um, as you configure your app domains, um, set up Chrome device management, provision your users, um, and then also focus on the customer side of things while you validate your Wi-Fi infrastructure, um, your network infrastructure, setting up things like printing, and setting up customer-specific use cases if applicable. So that is really where the bulk of the work is going to be throughout the deployment session. Um, a lot of this will be focused on working with your users, getting that necessary information, working with your team to, again, determine who is going to be focused on what, but ensuring that the project plan stays smooth throughout the course of the deployment. So application is a really big part of that. We also want to make sure that you're comfortable with the different milestones that we're setting. As we continue to focus on what the project plan will look like, a lot of this will also be changed throughout the course. Sometimes everything needs to be you know, worked through as we're going through it. There might be modifications throughout your deployment, and that's what your account team will be there for to help you throughout that process. As far as device prep goes, there's a few different ways that organizations go through device prep. They might have something called white glove prep, which helps update Chrome to the latest build and rolling devices into a customer domain, preparing for shipping to the different locations that you're going to be sending these devices out to. Some of you may or may not be using partners for your deployment. A lot of you probably are. So that is also another factor to take into consideration as you're working through the deployment as another piece of the puzzle that your deployment team will be working through. Another critical piece of the deployment cycle is working through testing and making sure that test devices are set up, testing the deployment process and making sure that again, things are modified as we go and that we're addressing things that may or may not be working throughout the process. As you can see on the bottom here, it shows that all of this is part of the project management of the deployment, but there's also another really critical piece, which is the call change management and training. Change management might not be a familiar term for a lot of you who are going through deployment for the first time. Ultimately, change management is a term that we use when we're describing 
what an organization will be going through as far as change. So as you're transitioning to Chromebooks, that's part of your change management initiative and how a lot of your users are going to be impacted by this new change. Change management allows us to identify what needs to be changed within your organization as it relates to Chromebooks and how we can then make those necessary changes um, together as a team. Throughout the deployment process, it's really important to know who your core IT user groups are, who your early adopters are, and making sure that you have a conducive global go live date. As you are going through the management console and redefining your deployment process, it does take a lot of device prep and res resolution of technical issues that might come up. That is where you'll work with your team to identify what those issues are and get a good idea of how that's impacting your overall deployment. With the project management of this, again, this will take sometimes three months to six months, but again, every organization is different. So depending on your organization and the use cases, it can vary, but that is just a time frame reference that we typically use with our customers as we're talking through um, Chrome deployment. And then as the Chrome deployment comes to an end is where you'll have that transition period. After the deployment is done, you'll decide as a team and with your account team, what that ongoing support will look like. That is everything from end user support to IT management support, as well as hardware support. So those are the three key factors when we're looking at what that ongoing support will look like. We want to ensure that even after the deployment, you're getting the necessary support from um, Chrome as possible. So now that we've discussed what the overall Chrome deployment looks like, um, there are some kickoff best practices and watch points. Um, so this is really the time to confirm your team's roles, any assumptions and responsibilities and scope that each person is going to be responsible for. We want to make sure that we as a team are going to the right people on your organization to work through those deployment questions, IT resolution, any potential blockers that come up and making sure that each use case is really being focused on within the project plan as much as possible. We have deployment design sessions and those are really focused on pointing discussions at this phase and gearing towards requirements and any project gaps, resolving any unknowns that might come up. Again, this is really just for us to get a good sense of what is needed from Google Chrome and to better make your experience with Chrome Enterprise. We want to ensure that the deployment is running smoothly, that there aren't any gaps, and if there are any gaps, we're able to address them um, as a team and work through them. It's really critical in that instance to identify who's responsible for that change management and training early on, so that way we can mitigate any potential risk. Um, it takes time to plan out appropriate communications and training um, for these users that are going to be switching over to Chrome. Um, so it's a really critical piece to a successful deployment in order to make it as smooth as possible. As I talk through adoption and change impact, I know it's probably not an area that a lot of you have gone through in the past um, when maybe working through a deployment of other, you know, solutions that might be uh, used for your organization. It is important for Chrome to create a structured approach to manage the user experience for those that are switching to Chrome. So an effective change management plan really looks at why users are understanding why they're switching to Chrome in the first place and are getting a better sense of a better way to work and their productivity. As a best practice, users are also making a personal decision to adopt Chrome devices in most cases. In some cases, it's an involuntary choice, but in other cases, they might opt in or opt out of using a Chromebook. So that is another piece of the adoption impact that can be on your organization, that not every user is going to be using Chrome. 
Um, it's really critical for communication to be customized to users, depending on what group they're in and answering the questions that they care about so that they feel supported. Um, it's also really critical that users are trained and ready to use their Chrome devices. Otherwise, they're not going to get the most use out of it if they're not aware of how uh, these new uh, features or resources work for them and their productivity. As we talk through change management, there are some defining keywords that we use during deployment, um, depending on the audience or groups. Um, so we use the term go big to identify how many user groups uh, or users per group um, that we're going to be targeting for uh, deployment. And it's really important to try and target large groups as we're using uh, user groups so that we can get more feedback and get more accurate feedback um, instead of having one or two users that might not have the most uh, feedback and impact on an organization. Grab and go um, are loaners that are available to collect feedback. Um, some of you may be already using grab and go already. Um, grab and go is a loaner device that a lot of organizations use for people and employees who are just looking to grab a laptop and log in with their uh, user login. Um, but it's also a really good way to collect feedback and users can do it in their day to day with Chrome. Target leads, these are uh, department leads um, that we are asking to use Chromebook for a period of time to pilot for their teams. Um, a good rule of thumb is to offer incentives for those who are willing to try them out. So that way you're getting the necessary feedback um, that is critical for the deployment success. Opt out is a term that I had used on the previous slide. Um, it gives Chromebooks to, uh, when we're giving Chromebooks to new employees, from the start, um, it gives them the option to return the Chromebook after two weeks. Um, if they return the Chromebook for whatever reason, it's always good to get a reason why, so that way you can, again, collect that feedback that and provide it to us so that we can have a better sense of what uh, gaps or what issues um, with Chromebooks are present in your organization. Simple task first, um, so this term is uh, used to start with traditional office workers first who are doing typical office productivity. Um, so finance and accounting is typically a no, um, but this is a, a term that we use when we're focused on the traditional office users. As you continue to go throughout your deployment, <clears throat> it's always important to focus on evaluating the success of it and making sure things are running smoothly. So we look at our active users, whether they're pilot users or Chrome champions or specific department heads that are using Chromebooks for their teams. We look at those active users and there's a few different ways that we can identify what productivity and success looks like for your organization. Training and education data is definitely a big start as far as identifying those gaps. If these users are not training themselves or educating themselves on those new features that they have available at their disposal, it's a good indicator that maybe they're not using the, the tool or they're not using the Chromebook and it's a good way for you to get a good sense of who's using it and who's not. Number of participants who have completed training as well definitely is a good rule of thumb as as well. It's definitely recommended that they complete any training that they have at their disposal so that they can use the Chromebook to the best of their ability. Looking at numbers of help desk tickets versus before and looking at user data like NPS scores and CSAT scores are always a good rule of thumb to get a good sense of any technical blockers or any uh, potential issues that come up throughout the deployment. We also want to look at the deployment happiness survey data. So it might be a data that your organization puts together to see how your employees or users are really liking using their Chromebooks. And again, what other gaps might be looked at during this time. And then lastly, ensuring that employee business data like employee productivity data and average cost or performance per employee is looked at too. These are internal data points that you can look at, at your organization to get a good sense of if Chromebooks are working well for your organization. 
typically G Suite customers, um, if you have an increase of app usage or adoption, it's usually a good indicator that Chromebook adoption is going well um, because you're able to see firsthand that data and how it's impacting them um, using the Chromebook. As we look at ways to inform employees about these changes in Chrome, um, there's a few different things to keep in mind. First and foremost, you wanna look at your audience and be able to identify who your audience is and how you want to communicate with them. So some audience that you might wanna be communicating with are your employees first and foremost, any customers that are impacted by Chromebooks, IT support, stakeholders, partners, champions, team leads, these are all part of your user group. So you want to be able to really focus on what content makes the most sense for each of these user groups. Different channels um, that you might want to communicate through are web, email, guides, training, social media, newsletters, whatever communication works best for your organization is what I would recommend too for how you're communicating these changes with Chromebooks. And then for content, you wanna also focus on what content makes the most sense for your user group. Your content for employees might be very different for your customers and your you know, content that you have for partners might be very different from your champions. So you wanna make sure that your content is really focused on each user group and what would be tailored to them. Um, so you, at the end of the day, you wanna focus on goal, direction, reasons, next steps, contact information, and audience and channel specific info that will be the most useful to them. So it might take a bit of customization to focus on that content for those user groups. As you're thinking about execute, thinking about ways to really effectively communicate, avoid communication overload, Whenever users are switching to a Chromebook or any other new device, it's really important to avoid communication overload. Keeping it simple is definitely the best. Um, so we wanna make sure we're not overlapping with other changes or communications as much as possible. Making sure you're keeping it exciting. Ultimately, you want users to be excited about using their Chromebooks. So whichever way it makes sense to communicate that is best. Deadlines are also recommended too, because I think it gives, if for those of you who are under your deployment timelines, you want users to be using it by a certain time frame. So it's really important to have those timelines put in place. So that way we can get that information um, as effectively as possible. And then lastly, competition. Um, it's actually a really fun way to get employees engaged and um, get new users involved with getting that feedback um, collected to your organization. Lastly, improvement. So as you're evaluating the effectiveness of each communication, you can look at the open clicks, performance, feedback, any uptake and metrics, um, any issues that you're collecting through your CSAT scores or NPS scores and follow-ups. Um, I think it's really important as an organization to figure out how you're going to continue to improve the experience for these new users who are using Chromebooks. So for those of you who are interested in making sure that your content is applicable to your users, um, I would definitely encourage you to work with your account team on this and to work through what content works best for your organization, um, as well as some best practices. Um, if you have other questions around the overall deployment, it's always also um, important to work with your account team on that too throughout the process. So that is the end of the Chrome deployment methodology and adoption um, session. Thank you so much for joining. If you have additional questions, please email chromeonair at google.com and stay tuned for the next session.